Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome out to tonight's training webinar. Uh, my name is Jake Foray. I'm here with Stephen Swenson, and uh, this is the weekly training that we do for members of TaxSellSupport.com. Yeah, absolutely. And, and tonight, uh, as me and Shane were talking about, we decided that we wanted to go through and look at some, some online auctions, some upcoming opportunities, and really just kind of some of the advantages that are out there participating in tax sales online. Yeah, in fact, we're getting to a time of the year where there are a lot of tax sales that are taking place, and um, so a lot of times uh, you don't know about those unless somebody shows them to you, and we're overwhelmed by just the number of opportunities that are out there, and so we thought it might be a good time to uh, go through and show you some of the different opportunities that, uh, that we've found um, just over the course here of a little bit in different locations uh, across the country. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, really, there are so many opportunities uh, that, that me and Shade run across that really it's, it's impossible to take advantage of all the opportunities there are. You know, with over 30, over 3,000 different counties, 50 different states, there's auctions taking place every single month, uh, really hundreds of different auctions usually. Uh, where there's going to be opportunities to participate either through online auctions, live auctions, uh, but there really is just a lot of opportunity now to do your research and investing online. Yeah, it seems like the more we look now, uh, the more property we found that find that is available, and um, this can be in all different places. I mean, it seems like there's just no shortage of uh, counties that use some form of a tax cell to kind of complete their uh, their their property tax enforcement system. So, tons and tons of opportunities, and counties are also wising up to the fact that the easier they can make it for investors to participate in, uh, the better it, it really is for them because it helps them sell more. And so, we're starting to see, I think, improvements too in uh, in the quality of the information and in how easy the uh, the sales are to participate in. Yeah, really, and th and there's a lot of different areas that uh, that have opportunity, especially when it comes to tax deeds. You know, this part of the year, over the next three months, there's going to be a lot of different tax deed states that are going to be conducting auctions. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity for people that are interested in actually buying real estate. Yeah. So for starters, uh, we're going to spend a good portion of this webinar just doing actual live trainings. And so we're gonna make the webinar a little bit shorter because it makes the recordings uh, the size huge. Uh, but we're gonna switch over and, uh, and take a look. And we're gonna actually start off here with the student website. We're gonna start off with tax health support. Now, there are a couple different places here that, uh, that we can go to look, but uh, a normal place that you can check and uh, you can start from if you're looking for sales that are coming up is to go to the auction calendar uh, which is here under the list center so all the lists you're going to get will always be found underneath the list center here somewhere um, but the auction calendar uh, you can move around here to check different dates and uh, you can see that for uh, this is for July for the month of August we're really busy you know there are a lot of sales that are uh, that are taking place and you can click on these links to, uh, to download lists or in, in some cases to, uh, to link directly to, uh, to sites if you want. But this gives us um, a little bit of an idea of some of the sales that are, uh, that are taking place. So uh, as a good place to begin, why don't we start off by looking into Michigan, uh, which uh, Michigan does their tax sales a little bit different from, uh, from some of the other, uh, some of the other Counties and states. The uh, I think it's the state that actually owns the website. It seems like, right? Tax sale. Um, yeah, well, I, I'm not sure if they actually own the website itself, but they definitely um, are are using it as as far as just for the tax sale. So I think it might be owned by a, by a different company, but I'm not positive. Yeah. Well, yeah, pretty much what we found is that um, yeah, it is just specific to Michigan, and it's a pretty well well done website. They've had it for a while. They've had it for longer than a lot of the other counties. Uh, I think have been doing uh, different things like this. And in fact, this was, you know, participating in this tax sale info uh, website was actually the first, one of the first times that we purchased uh, tax deeds uh, through online. You know, it was probably almost, almost a decade ago, maybe seven, eight years ago, uh, we ended up purchasing property uh, 
uh, you know, some of our first purchases online were actually using this website in some of the Michigan tax sales. Yeah, in fact, it is a pretty handy website here. I might even be able to enlarge this a little bit. Okay, so the way they have this split up is by date. And if you wanted, you could look at uh, it and it would show the, uh, you know, kind of the calendar of, of when there are uh, different auctions taking place. But you can see they start on the 29th of July or the 31st of July, and they go until I think it's the 8th of, uh, of September, I think. Yeah, the 8th of September. So this is really the month for, uh, for Michigan and for the, uh, the sales that they'll be conducting. So um, now when you want to look at it, you can see where the county is that you're looking at here. If we're looking at, uh, at Kalamazoo, uh, but you're going to click here basically to, uh, to take a look at what the county has available. Now this is also a website where you, if you go to the site often or if you're looking for stuff, you need to set up like uh, basically a username and a password on the account and get it set up. Yeah, and that's really something I'd probably recommend doing with, with any of these websites and, and create kind of a little file that you keep all your username and passwords. But because it doesn't cost anything, it's, it, it makes it a lot easier to go ahead and log in. So usually we recommend setting up a username and password if you can. Yeah, now for how these sites operate, there are a couple of nice things to take note of. Um, the first is on the, uh, the left here under auction sales book and under catalog spreadsheet, we've got two different things here. Um, the, uh, the, the auction sales book is a PDF download uh, that we can click on that will give us uh, an overview of how the auctions work in those areas and then it will actually give us a more of a traditional style tax sell list that we can see. And the catalog spreadsheet is more of an Excel style spreadsheet if you wanted to just see that that information directly. Now those things will help to I guess help you speed through property quicker but they've, they've got a pretty good system in place too on the site for uh, for showing you know what types of properties you're interested in and that is you can decide which properties you're interested in by type. So you can decide if you're looking for uh, some type of a home, cottage, they're talking about residential property typically here or whether you're looking for commercial property or waterfront acreage uh, commercial lots or vacant lots and so if I depending on what we're interested in here if we wanted let's say we're looking at homes and cottages here we can see where they've got these properties listed here and uh, we probably have oh, what about 11 or 12 of them here now Something else that's nice about how these sales are conducted, in fact, you'll see um, there's a picture of her in different, uh, in different pictures because I think she's one of the individuals that work for the, uh, uh, work for the, the state or the county. And they're essentially taking pictures of the properties and, uh, and writing down um, descriptions of them, making uh, basically preparations for the tax sale. And so the pictures are, uh, are pretty up to date. You know, they're, uh, they're, they're relatively new pictures. And it's a pretty good breakdown. I mean, it's actually really handy when you can read some of the notes from the individual that's been there. And they oftentimes will also have pictures of, uh, of the property both inside and out, which is also a nice feature. Yeah. You know, with, with, with both Michigan and, and New York does a little bit the same, uh, which we'll be looking at a little bit later. Uh, they sometimes will, will have pictures of the inside if the property is, is vacant. Then they'll get inside and take pictures if the property is uh, currently occupied. A lot of times they'll have that information in, in part of the notes as well. And so, you know, they actually go out to each one of these sites. So you're looking at, at current photos. You're, you're not looking at the Google Earth from two or three years ago. These photos were essentially taken for this auction. Yeah, which is uh, as nice as having somebody out there that's basically looking at properties for you because, uh, you know, you can get a, uh, a, a good idea of what the property is like and you know, what the condition is like. Now, but what you'll see is that we've got a mix of homes here, and you can see about where the minimum bids are, uh, ranging anywhere from about $2,500 um, and on up on some of these single-family homes. Uh, but some of these are really not bad. I mean, you can see, uh, for instance, oh, I'm going to get logged in here. It kicks us out here. You know, really, you're, look, you're looking at single-family homes, which most of them are anywhere between three to $10,000. So, you know, I mean, we can check to see what, what the market value is, but when you're looking at, at buying a, a single-family home, 
a, a possible rental property, uh, something uh, that you could sell or finance or something like that. You know, when you're looking at these single family homes that you can pick up between five to ten thousand uh, dollars, you know, that's really a, a, a pretty nice area to start looking at uh, with opening bid amounts. Yeah. So um, this property here we're looking at minimum bid starting out at seventy four hundred and uh, their assessed value on it is about fifty six thousand. Is what they're estimating there. They also you'll see some of the images that they have, and they've got a lot of images on these properties to give you a pretty good idea of uh, you know what the conditions like. Yeah, and like like Steve said, you know we found that anytime there's somebody that's still there, we'll just get uh, exterior pictures. If they can get in, then they'll they'll take interior pictures as well. So you can see in this case, you've got interior pictures here, which interior pictures are nice because it gives you an idea of the overall condition of the property what it might need, um, you know, what, you know, basically what's going on, what the situation is. And, you know, several of the properties are still full, kind of like, you know, like this one is, uh, is, is still full of stuff. And so, you know, you'll see some of these, but overall looking at this, I mean, the condition on it is excellent. Um, you know, I think overall it, it may need some work here and there, but everything we're seeing is a house that was cared for for the most part. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, with all this type of stuff, there's a process that you'll go through with all their personal stuff where, you know, they'll have they'll have a chance to come get it. And if they don't, then essentially you can garbage it or sell it. Uh, but, you know, in a, in a case like this, you know, it looks like that there's quite a bit of stuff within the home as well. Yeah. Yeah. There is really um, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff in, in, in uh, this particular home. Um, now, also below the information that they provide here, along with uh, the images, they also have the information split up like this, which I thought was kind of interesting, uh, but they leave additional information, which is nice. So the comments are where you're going to get some really good information uh, about the property and things, you know, things that uh, the, the person making the notes noticed. And a lot of times there'll be things that will tell you overall condition of the property, maybe things that are wrong, things that are nice. Um, and, you know, they're always handy. You know, these uh, all of these nodes. They also tell you things. Uh, for instance, um, utilities. It tells you, you know, it's disconnected but metered right now. Um, you, know, you can see uh, you can see things like whether it uses a septic system. Um, you know where they get the water. Just a lot of handy information here to uh, to get if you're looking for it. Yeah. There are a ton of properties in all of these areas here, so we didn't want to take too long, I think, um, on any one specific uh, set of properties just because there's so much value, but we can dig into any of them at some point here if we want. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, overall, there's there's quite a few, quite a lot of opportunity here in, here in Michigan with all these different sales taking place, and you can see that in addition to the to the single family homes, there's also going to be lots of land property, lots, different things like that, that, uh, that could be good investments as well. Yeah, there are all different types of property really, uh, that you'll come across. So, uh, yeah, in fact, if we were looking here, um, we wanted to take a look at it and see if there's any of the commercial buildings here that will pop up. This will show us some of the commercial buildings they've got. You can look and see if they've got any commercial land, some acreage and, the acreage here. Well, one of these, a pretty nice home. Yeah, one of these is for uh, for this home, which is a minimum bid on it is twenty six thousand. The uh, the estimated value on it, the SEV. I wish I, I I wish I knew exactly what that SEV something with value, but sixty five thousand basically. It's an assessed value. Although I'll bet the, the um, I'll bet the, the value of the property is probably higher than that, especially if it's sitting on some on some land. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that it is. A lot of these properties are all going to be valued quite a bit higher than the SEB. I mean, essentially, that's just the you know the market value or the assessed value. So uh, that's not necessarily going to mean what the property is going to sell for. And a lot of these are going to have good information. So you're going to have the address that you can go and search in Google Earth. You can search it on Zillow and see if you can pull up a property value record. So this, these, these websites are going to have a lot of information that's going to make it easier for you to do additional research on it. Yeah, yeah. I think if you, um, you can always go from this point and go and seek out more information, but for an initial level of, of uh, discovery here with the lists, 
the information they provide is pretty sufficient. Um, so yeah, that one's uh, just another interesting property that uh, that could potentially work out. Um, let's take a look at the uh, under the homes, and you're going to see homes just like this one here in the middle that's that's you know overrun. Uh, that, that really is going to take a lot more work and so properties like that you know most investors are going to avoid that unless you're a seasoned investor you're really looking for especially if you're looking for structure properties to begin with you want to find a property that's going to take as little work as possible for you to be able to turn around and flip the property yeah here's a here are here's an ideal one right here this is actually a, uh, a duplex I guess you could say or a condo you know it's basically a twin home I mean it's split in half and uh, the minimum bid on it's about 9,800. The uh, the assess on it is about 69,500, and it also provides us with uh, inside pictures of the property as well. And so keep in mind you've got both sides there of the uh, of the property, and it's really not too bad at all. I mean it looks like it was uh, like it is like it's in pretty much livable condition, uh, and you know would need a few things, but for the most part it's okay. No, no, I, I, you know, I would imagine this this property has probably a pretty good value when you're looking at it on on the open market. Uh, so, you know, overall, I mean, if 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 you were able to pick up this property and pick up uh, both sides of it, that I mean, that, you know, suddenly you could have a, a double rental. Yeah, which would be huge, and and you know, in fact, I wonder if it's worth looking. I guess we'll, uh, we wouldn't necessarily probably be able to find this on Zillow. Usually, because duplexes like this, they don't always bounce yeah. each side of it. Um, but this would be an awesome investment property, you know, for anybody. You know, if if they did it as a single family home, it's possible. You know, if each side they valued as a single family home. Yeah. But you can see from that front picture. I mean, look how it's really a, a pretty nice property. Yeah. You know, it really is. Uh, you know, beyond that, they they even have. Uh, Lakeside properties, you know, I don't see if there's any waterfronts here. We'll take a look here in uh, some of these upcoming ones. In some of these, we have lakeside properties, uh, like vacation properties, and we also have tons of land. So we're looking at, at some of the land opportunities. Land opportunities will start at a much lower dollar amount uh, and, you know, work its way up from there. But there are basically everything in between when it comes to uh, Michigan properties. Yeah. Let me take a quick look here. Another one here, Calhoun. And again, we can see we want, we, uh, depending on what we're looking for here, you know, if we're looking at homes, well, then we can start to go through the list here and we can get an idea. And, you know, what's nice too is we can see different things from the notes here. So, for instance, um, well, something like this house, right? Um, this either one of these. This one's only. Uh, this one has a forty-six hundred dollar opening bid amount, um, and this one is actually on ten acres of land, and it has a fourteen thousand uh, dollar opening bid amount. That's a lot of land. It's a pretty good chunk. It'll be a pretty nice little place. So let's take a look. So the uh, the estimated value on it right now, or assessed value on it, is about seventy-four thousand. With a fourteen thousand dollar opening bid amount here, and you know, with being ten acres, it may be something that you know we can look at Google Earth or something like that to get a better idea of the surrounding areas. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, they leave a link right here that'll take you directly to uh, basically pulls up Google Maps directly on the location there where the property is located. Let's see. Probably be, yeah. Is that probably the house up there in the front, I would imagine? Maybe. <coughs> that's the house and that's the shed that we saw? Yeah, it could be, uh, let's see. I think that will be it. Okay, so yeah, yeah, that's it, and and it probably does go back quite a ways. You know, it's a big chunk of, of land yeah. there. It owns all the property back here behind it. 
but you can see the images here are, uh, I think, 2012 images. Uh, you can see that the property is in, still in, in good condition here. And the other ones are newer images, and, and they look like they were pretty good, too. Oh, yeah. Overall, I'm sure you're looking at a property that's worth, you know, well over 100 grand. Yeah. You can yeah. see some even of the homes in the area have pools, which in this area of New York is probably... You know, it's probably indicating that it's a pretty nice area. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Michigan. And I mean, uh, yeah, Michigan. Now, let's see here. So, this is a great property. I think a, a lot of these really uh, would be fantastic properties. In fact, let's take a look here. Let me show you another, um, just kind of a neat one here that I was looking at earlier that I really liked. Uh, this one right here. So, the minimum bid on it is 18500 and it's because it's essentially a vacation property on this lake. It's on a, and I don't know if you'd say that, a Gogoak Lake? Yeah, Gogoak. Yeah, so um, the, uh, the minimum bid on this property at 18500 uh, is really not too bad considering that the assessed value on it is 115000 So this property has a uh, higher value because of where it's located. If you, uh, if you take a look uh, in some of the images here, you can see that the property is in pretty good condition. You can see it's got this dock you know, in the backyard. And you see there's still stuff inside the home too. So it's one of those homes that's going to need a little bit of something here. It's going to need some cleanup and work, but uh, overall though, it's still livable. It's crazy. It's like, you know, there's, grand piano. Yeah, there's still a grand piano in here. Uh, there is a lot of stuff, you know, they've got Couches, furniture. I mean, it's you know this place is still full of stuff. So, yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. But this property would just be excellent. You know, I think as a, as as an investment here, and the uh, the bid to value ratio, even as it is, is, is about fifteen percent uh, or under. You know, to start off with here, which is not bad. Now, if we wanted to take a quick look and just see overhead image, I see here where these are located. There we go. It's actually a pretty big lake. Yeah. Or it's bigger than I thought it was, at least. Yeah, let's take a look here and see if it does look like it's kind of big. That would be nice. That's just about right, that size of a lake. Yeah, that would be kind of a nice thing because it would be big enough to water ski on. Nice to live on. And they're in a good location here for it with this little, uh, this little inlet. You know, this is basically the property right at the end of the inlet. Yeah, great location, you know, probably has great value, uh, great property, and and really you're looking at it, probably an opening bid of around 10, 15 percent of the market's value. So, uh, you know, even if, even acquiring this property at 20 or 30 cents on the dollar, you're, you're probably still looking at a pretty good investment. Yeah. Now, interesting, um, in this overhead image, we can see that there are cars in the parking lot, which means that it could be occupied. Hi. It looks like a boat too. Yeah, yeah, there is. A, it does seem like in the images I remember seeing a, a boat in that parking lot. Let's see. You know, looking at all this stuff within the home, that's something you've got to consider as well if you're going to be bidding on the property. Uh, there's even vehicles within it. So, you know, within a scenario like this, it's probably, it'd probably be a matter of, of contact, you know, Contacting the owners, letting them know they have a period of time uh, to clear that, if to clear all that stuff out. Otherwise, you know, essentially, you'll you'll take possession of it. Yeah. Now, yeah, there are so many good properties here that we look at, and it really is such a nice feature being able to uh, to narrow it down here with just that click and. Yeah, we could look, and I think a lot of these would work out great as investments, and they uh, have a pretty good low starting amount, you know, that would uh, work out pretty well. You know, there's other properties that are rough and that, uh, that wouldn't work out too well at all. Yeah, this is much the one that I looked at earlier. Yeah, um, this property here uh, is a minimum bid of $4,400. Um, assessed on it is, uh, is twenty two five, and let's see, I don't I don't remember if they have inside pictures of this one. No. Let me look at the quality. As long as 
Zillow. Oh yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We'll pull it up here on Zillow. So yeah, this property was uh, was occupied at the time. Looks like about 0.25 acres. So let's grab the address here and let's pull it up. What we're interested in seeing here is the difference between what the SEB is and uh, what the SEB is versus you know the uh, the value on the property. I don't know why it does this sometimes. Here, let's take a look. Is that the right address. Pittman Avenue, Battle Creek. Oh, I didn't, they didn't take me. There we go. Oh, yeah. You see, so here's something interesting is that the SEB is only 22500 but the estimated Zillow price on it is 73000 which you know, tells us there's a big uh, disparity there between those two. So the, uh, the SEB value doesn't necessarily tell us very accurately I think, what that property may or may not be worth. No, from, from, from years in the past, a lot of times the SEB is about 50 percent, uh, you know, maybe 60 percent of, of what, the, what the market value is or what, you know, what's going to be closer to the market value. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at a $100,000 home, that home could easily be worth 160, 180, maybe even 200,000. Yeah. Yeah, so really on you know, a property like this, uh, with that kind of value, you're looking at buying a single family home for under five grand that has a value of seventy five thousand. Yeah, it's insane. Well, uh, there are so many places that uh, that we could keep looking here, but um, why don't we take a look at some stuff in maybe another state uh, so people can get a good broad idea of everything that uh, that's, that's available right now. So let's go back here. Let's figure out here the next place you want to go. Yeah. You know, yeah, well, why, don't we, why don't we take a look here? I think we want to take a look at some of the California stuff, or whether we want to take a look at, uh, at uh, maybe we'll start there. Florida? Yeah, let's just start with Florida. Let's take a look at those here. So we'll go take a look at Charlotte and Lee. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at Lee. Okay. Be August 15th here. So I'm just going to go down here to August 15th. And. Okay. Let's take a look here. The auction calendar. And. There to August. And you can see a, a good tax sale every week. You know, these larger tax sales are nice too. And this is actually a pretty good number of. of to be selling every week where there's going to be some pretty good opportunities off that. Yeah, and, and, and with, with these, you know, there's good opportunities each week. So we can look at the 15th and there'll be some. We can look at the 22nd, the 29th. You know, each one of these days is going to have some, some pretty good properties on that list. Yeah, excellent. So let's take a look here. I think it is I want to take a look here starting with the 15th. And what we're doing is we're looking through these lists. We're just essentially scanning that opening bid amount versus the assessed value. And we're looking for, you know, properties that have a decent bid to value ratio versus the assessed value. And so, you know, as we come across, here's one with the $6,000, 67, 5,000. And we can go, if we go ahead and click on the link, it'll pull up the property record, uh, which is going to give us some pretty good information on it, including the photo of the property. So we can see, Okay, this is a single family home. Uh, you know, we have the address there. You can see that it's three bedroom, one bath, built in 1954, about 2,000 square feet. So we're going to get all that information just by one click, uh, just one click on the, the link, it pulls up that information, and we can do additional due diligence if we're interested in it. Yeah, you can see the image here is from, um, from they've got one from 2000 and one from 2003. Um, but if we wanted to look and see a little bit newer image here, we've already grabbed the address right there. Um, let's make sure I've got it. And we just take a quick look at it. And yeah, what draws us to that 
initially is uh, that bid value ratio looks like it to be about 10%. And the property seems like it has quite a bit of value. So let's take a look here. See, it looks like it might have some serious roof problems. So that's good to know. We can see that this, this photo is from 2017 as well. So in looking at that, I mean, essentially we're looking at a property here that's going to need a new roof. Mm -hmm. uh, and so taking that to account, then that's, no, you know, that's important information for us to know. That's the reason why it's so important to get, especially if you're buying, you know, some type of structured properties, to get a current photo on the pro current photo of the property. If that's you doing it, if that's having to hire someone else to be able to do it, it's definitely something you want to do because just bidding on that problem without knowing that you know a roof like that could be a thirty, forty thousand dollar problem. Yeah, yeah. But if you plan for it, then it's not a problem at all. You know, I think things like that are only an issue if they come unexpected and you don't see them beforehand. And this particular property uh, is estimated to be worth on Zillow about one hundred and twelve thousand, and that's uh, against the sixty nine thousand dollar assessed value that it has. So the value is certainly there with this property to justify uh, fixing it up. I mean, it, it uh, rent estimate on is about twelve hundred a month, and I would believe it. You know, it seems like it's uh, it's a pretty nice property. Um, you know, if the with something like that roof. Uh, you know, that's something where you really almost need to be there on site if you're going to try to make a judgment call on it. Unless you're just going to, uh, you know, plan on, on, you know, spending whatever it takes to fix the house up. But if, uh, if you're more, you know, if you need to be more cautious than that, then, you know, doing roofs can be very expensive. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you, can, you could probably get a pretty good idea based on the square feet of how much it would cost. Um, but then also, you know, with, with, with the roof problem, you've got to look at, at the situation of, uh, of mold or anything like that. But also one thing is you're checking out the property, and let's say that the property isn't, you know, doesn't have anyone there. You know, go knock on the neighbor's door and just say, hey, I'm a real estate investor. Ask a couple of questions. Sometimes the neighbors can give you some pretty good information on the property, uh, which is only going to help educate you in deciding if you want to bid on it or not. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that does look pretty good here. Let's take a look and see, you know, you want to look at this one too? Um, yeah, there was quite a few of them. I can't quite remember exactly which ones were. Yeah, let's just take a look. This one has an uh, opening bid of about 5000 This one looks like it's more of just kind of a smaller trailer of yeah. some sort. But there's quite a few different properties. We can keep going down the list. Stuck so here's one forty uh, forty five hundred dollars opening bid for forty one thousand dollar assessed value. And really, as you go down this list, you can just kind of quickly click on each one of them and see what mm -hmm. the properties are, and then from there decide which ones you want to do some more due diligence. Yeah, so you can see that one's is, you've got another single family home there. That's not too bad. There's another one. Especially when we're talking about that five to ten thousand dollar price range, where you're looking to 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 do a to start bidding, you know, that five ten thousand dollars you're looking at it, we've looked at homes here now in Michigan, we've looked at homes in Florida where that five ten thousand dollars can really put you in a decent property. And this particular property here is in Lehigh Acres, Florida, you know, which again we're talking about some of the fastest growing real estate places in the, in the country. Um, you know, Lehigh Acres is uh, is a really nice area. We can see this one is uh, is a condo estimated value on it here. You know, it's two bedroom, two bath, about a thousand square feet. So really, uh, pretty comfortable. Yeah. yeah in fact, um, we could. Uh, I'm sure we could probably find it here. Uh, but at forty-one thousand for a condo, that's pretty good value there for the uh, for the assessed value. Yeah, I'm sure we could get newer images here if we want. That's the one thing that's nice about a condo as well is that, that the the outside structure. You don't need to be as worried about the outside structure and. Usually, if there's a serious problem with the inside structure, they're going to know about it. What I mean is, like, if, if you've got some type of leak, that's going to leak down onto the to the person below, and they're going to be aware of it. So, when you're looking at, at purchasing condos, if the outside is is fairly clean and everything up to date, then really the inside's just usually. I mean, you may need to put in new appliances and things like that, but you're not going to have 
some of the same type of um, issues that you may have when you're looking to purchase a single family home as far as is actually doing rehab on the property. Yeah, I think that um, suits right in that they provide a certain degree of protection there because uh, it's a little bit more of a community type um, housing and you can see that uh, this particular property is estimated to be worth about 59000 which is pretty good you know, for a, for a condo there. And uh, as an investment, you know, starting out, we're looking at it here, $4,400, it's a steal, you know, to start bidding on it. And it'd be worth paying probably, we'll have to see what these end up, end up selling for. But that's a nice property and it's a nice starting bid amount. Yeah. You know, as I was looking through some of these, I think it was maybe the next, it might've been the, the week after this auction, you know, there was some nicer properties as well. So you're going to see a wide range. You're going to see some of these that are starting at five and 10, but you're also going to find sometimes properties that are starting at 20, but they're worth two or 300 or 400. Yeah. This one, uh, $6,800 is the starting bid. This is also in Lehigh Acres and uh, $54,000 assessed value on it. Um, and it, you can see here, it looks like another nice single family home. Sure, the value on it is probably closer to, to eight or ninety thousand. Yeah, definitely. There. Oh, there are a lot of them here. You can just see all of these properties are are pretty good. All these ones in Lehigh Acres would be pretty tempting. Yes, yeah, so we're just you know, as you're just looking or reviewing down that you can see those those opening bid amounts versus the assessed value. And that's really what we're going to use to kind of judge which ones we're going to look at. And you can see that there's just quite a few different properties available. Yeah. So far, I mean, every single one of these that I've clicked on has been, you know, it's been pretty nice and would be a good one to start looking into. I mean, ultimately, you never know what uh, properties are going to, you know, what they're going to sell for in terms of what you're going to be competing with. But one of the advantages of doing sales like this, where they're happening every week there for four or five weeks, and each sale is fairly large, is that there's going to be more opportunities and people are going to be bidding on lots of different properties. There's a better chance that there are going to be some deals that you know that you might be able to uh, to snag. So I think it's a good idea to go through these and to, uh, to find a number of properties that you're interested in bidding on. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing that, that we've realized as well in, in dealing with the online auctions in Florida. I mean, really, we'd, we'd probably bid on, on three or four properties, maybe even more, at least four properties before we won one. So, you know, it was it, there was times where we went through entire auctions without winning any properties, but that was really because we were looking for a property at our price, our location, you know, around our parameters. And so because of that, we were allowing, you know, to get carried up in, in bidding wars or paying more than we wanted to. That way, when we did pick up the properties, we picked them up for our, the price that we wanted, and we were able to make the profit on them that we wanted as well. You know, even a property like this, you know, where you're looking at, at uh, some vacant land, it looks like it's about four acres or so. Uh, you know, if the value is there, this could very well be a, a decent investment as well because you're looking at a $3,000 investment uh, versus a piece of land that's still going to have is still going to have high value. Yeah. You know, it's also just nice to sometimes go back and to check uh, historical records, see what property sold for. In the past, looks like it sold last as a uh, as a quick claim deed for twenty five thousand. Uh, yeah, it's possible it could have been sold yeah. as a as a tax deed. Yeah, you know this particular property is interesting. I clicked on it because uh, the opening bid of thirty six hundred is so low compared to the assessed value of eighty thousand. You know, you're talking about a, um, a bid to value ratio is like five percent there, and so. Uh, you know that's, you know that's always pretty tempting, just because you don't see that happen very often. But with larger tracts of land, it's possible. This looks like a little bit more than an acre that they're selling here. One point two five acres. Let's try looking at uh, at uh, the week ahead of here. Uh, so let's see here. We're going to take a look here at the 22nd, which has got a, it looks like 29 out of 33 of them. I think it was either the 22nd or the 29th that had some some bigger homes on this one. 
you know, and a lot of these all look pretty nice too. You know, uh, these are again starting around the four to five thousand dollar range, and uh, and working their way up. And more of these here in Lehigh Acres. Yeah, I mean, really looking at these these bid to value ratios, we're really looking at about ten percent. Mm -hmm. So maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Um, you know, but for most of them, unless it's a, a homestead property, you're looking at, at, at a pretty good bid to value ratio. Yeah, in fact, what's nice too, I guess, is the majority of these that we're looking at are are pretty nice. You know, there's a number of these. A lot of these would be worth bidding on, most likely, and that's good just because uh, it means you're going to have a higher percentage of properties going through this cell that are uh, going to be nice. It's also, uh, it looks like it's a little bit newer image from July of 2016. Yeah. You can see that the property you know, was fenced in, but it looks almost like a tree house. Yeah. Up in the air a bit. Yeah, I guess we can kind of see here. It looks, it looks like it. You can take a look at it real quick if we wanted to. Yeah. Just take a look and see what it looks like here overhead. You know, again, this is the kind of stuff that used to take so much time and it's so fast now there's just no reason not to do it. And you can actually get a street side image here of this. You know, that's where the road ends. That's kind of interesting. So, yeah, they must own I wonder if they own this whole piece. Oh, actually, no. Oh, actually, they, 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 have, they have that front driveway. <coughs> That's right. They've got two different places to get out. That's what they've got. And we can take a look here. <coughs> oh, this is an old uh, street side. Yeah, it is an old street side image. Yeah, it's a 2008 image. Yeah, we can kind of see how the property is laid out. And it's, it's a nice property. I'm sure it's still pretty nice. Uh, especially when you're looking at a couple of thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, for that kind of amount. Take a look at one more here, and then we'll, uh, we'll take a look at, at some other properties too. Yeah, this one's another nice one here. And yeah, not a bad little single-family home, two bedroom, one bath, built 1983. 1983 is nice as well because, you know, that's going to be after lead-based paint, so you're not going to have to worry about some of those different things, uh, you know, um, old pipes, old wires, things like that. It's going to be a newer home. So even the remodel, uh, sometimes you're going to be a lot less costly with the newer home like that. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, I think um, asbestos is usually an issue on stuff that's older than about 82 as well. You know, you don't typically buy a lot yeah. of newer stuff as well, so you don't have to worry about asbestos removal on newer homes, too. Um, wow, well, there are just a ton of really good opportunities here. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's take a look at, uh, at some other areas here. Um, you know, let's take a look at, yeah, let's take a look at the New York stuff real quick. Do you want to do that? Sure. All right, let me close down a couple of these. All right, so now we're going to go back here uh, to the list center, down to the online auction section. And if we click on online tax deeds here, it'll bring up the list that we're going to be working off of. And uh, there are a lot of direct links here that will take you to uh, some of these sites. So uh, in fact, we'll end up looking here. There are a bunch of ta uh, sales taking place right now in California. For a lot of property. Um, in fact, yeah, we can probably even show everybody here. So, yeah, this here's 24, 25th, 26th. Yeah, this here's San Diego, and this is going to be coming up next week. On the 24th, they have essentially is what they're selling is their single family homes or the structured properties. Uh, the 25th, they're selling the land, and then it looks like on the 26th, they're selling a lot of, uh, oh, what are they called? Timeshares. Yeah, timeshares. Timeshares, yeah. Yeah, and so we can see here, you know, they've got the opening bid amounts. What's nice about this, the drop-down is it enables us to kind of see 
Um, although it looked like a lot of these, you know, they had the uh, the opening bid amount, uh, you know, a lot higher, you know, closer to like 50% of, of estimated value or something. Yeah. Along those lines. You know, also with the San Bernardino, you know, that one's a little bit interesting because it's, it's actually a resale. In fact, uh, me and Shape participated in the original sale uh, uh, just a couple of months ago, yeah. a month or so ago, a month or two ago, and and the properties that didn't sell because, you know, and some of these properties are ones that we've already looked at. That was kind of what's funny is going through, but they were higher than we were willing to pay. Uh, but now they're starting at a hundred dollar opening bid, and there's literally uh, hundreds of these properties available, starting with a hundred dollar opening bid. And so these are some that that you know are are seriously worth looking into, uh, especially when you're looking at these lower bid amounts of a quorum property. Yeah, with a hundred dollar opening bid amount, what you're really looking at is the county come pretty much coming out and saying, okay, you know, forget about whatever's owed on the property. We just want somebody to buy it. And so, you know, if there were properties that were too high, uh, you know, you, you keep in mind that if they're too high for you, then other investors are probably going to feel the same way. And a lot of those properties, you may get another shot at at a subsequent sale like this one, uh, where it's a resale, you know, and uh, they're just ready to kind of unload everything. So this property, uh, this list has a mix of uh, properties here uh, with uh, within this, uh, but we can see, oh, we get an idea here. I think one of these links, this is a direct link. And what we see, this is actually a vacant lot, you know, in, uh, in San Bernardino. Yeah, it's right here. So really, you know, we're looking at it, and it really looks like it's, it's commercial. You can see subway right there and some type of church. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, we're looking at a, a nice commercial lot right here, starting at a hundred dollar opening bid, uh, and so you know that's something that that makes everyone investors' ears perk up a little bit and are interested, uh, especially when acquiring doll, you know property like that for a lower amount. Now it could very well get bid up, but there's a lot of property here, and that's one of the advantages of having such a big list, is that. Is that you know there's so many different properties you're going to have a chance of picking up one of these properties for a lower dollar amount. Yeah, this is that uh, that lot that we're looking at right here, and yeah, I mean that's that's um, that's good commercial Prime space. Location. For, I mean, really starting for a hundred bucks that is pretty crazy. And you're really in a clean part of town, too. Yeah, well, that is insane. Now, not all of them are quite so valuable, um, but. In the beginning here, the way they've got these listed. So let's take a look. Yeah, they do so many things now that save us so much time. There we go. That's where it's at. It's this lot right here. Mm hmm. In fact, this is actually a property that I recognize because we looked at before. It's kind of that uh, building lot right there, uh, going along the side, right here. There we go. Yep, you can kind of see it here. Yeah. And again, for starting out at a hundred bucks, that's not bad at all. No, I mean you're looking at you know property forty thousand dollars. Uh, Fifty thousand dollars, something like that. Uh, that, that. You know, any any real piece of real estate that you acquire for a hundred dollars that has value in use is the no brainer in, in our book. Yeah, absolutely. Now, by the way, if anybody's wondering on how to get to any of these, just remember if you go to the uh, to the list center, you go to the online auctions page for a uh, for. Uh, online auctions and tax deeds, you'll see this list here of some of these tax deed states uh, that are holding online auctions and direct links to take you to those places. So right now we're just looking under California tax deed auctions here uh, for Grand Street Group uh, with San Diego, you know, this being the three different days on their sales and, uh, and for San Bernardino, yeah. the, uh, the five different sales. And those sales actually start on the, uh, the 24th of July uh, San Bernardino ones were starting on the uh, the seventh of August. 
you know, in addition to that, Los Angeles has one on bid for assets as well, just kind of an FYI uh, that's coming up that has quite a few properties and doesn't be shaped. Yeah, yeah. Quite a big list. Yeah, it does. It, it was a pretty big list. It seems like it had um, around 500 properties, which uh, would be a good opportunity there. Uh, it covers um, Los Angeles County and um, uh, some of the surrounding areas there of the property that I was looking at. And as we were looking through the Florida auctions just a little bit, you can see all of the Florida tax deed sales that are listed here as well. So, you know, most of the auctions are going to be held by real auction, but there's also a Grand Street group that holds a few of them. So all you need to do is really go to, go to this page and you can be connected to all of the online auctions or all of the tax deed auctions that are taking place. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, New York. I forgot we're going to go and take a look at New York here. Let me back up here a bit. Oh, please go down. There we go. And let's we go. All right, so we're just, uh, this is for, uh, for, uh, for I guess it's, it's on Sago, on Sago County. And the date on that tax bill is the 16th of August, right? Yeah, and this is just, uh, you know, there's going to be different types of properties. We just want to show you as many different examples as we can. And this is uh, New York uh, auctions that's coming up. And you can see some of the information. They have current photos, kind of like uh, like Michigan does as well, uh, and with uh, with different information. So as we're going down this list, we can see some of the different properties. Now let's go ahead and click on this item number five here, which was just kind of a little bit interesting. I was looking at it today, and it looks like it's some type of commercial greenhouse. Uh, but you can see that there's different photos, there's different information, uh, and essentially uh, the, the bidding starts at a delinquent taxes, and then it's going to bid up at $100, uh, $100 after that. Um, but there's all kinds of different property that are available uh, in, in some of these different areas. And so you can see some of the information, that the item details that are written about the property. Uh, and if, you know, if it's something you're interested in, with this kind of property, they're actually going to be holding a seminar, but you can do mail-in bids. And that's something that's becoming more and more common. Uh, you can do mail-in bids in in, um, in Arkansas. You can do mail-in bids in a lot of different areas where, where even if they're going to be having an online a live auction, you can still send in uh, bids after the fact or before the, before the auction to be included within the sale. Wow, is that the value on it, 235 Wow, that's really impressive. Yeah, two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars value is pretty good. You know, we can see that there's all kinds of different properties. Thirty-three. Let's take a look at. We see there's commercial, there's land. Uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of different ones. There's another little, uh, another little single family home that we can uh, pull up. You can see it's just a single family home. You can see any of the pictures that are that are on it. And some of these properties in this area are going to be a little bit older, uh, and so really we're going to be looking at the condition of the outside, any of the notes and information they have. Um, but you know a lot of these properties are going to be valued anywhere between $100,000 and $200,000 uh, as far as sale wealth. Yeah, they do certainly have a lot of them, don't they? Yeah, I think it's... Yeah, let's take a look right here. And like the ones in Michigan, you can see that this one wasn't occupied, it was vacant, and so they were able, actually able to go and take photos of the inside as well. And, you know, photos of the inside are obviously going to be helpful because that tells us a lot about the inside condition. You can see it's been vacant for a while, but overall you're really looking at it, not a bad house. Uh, you know, the, the paint looks good, everything looks pretty good, the tile, but even the kitchen and the bathrooms, and so really, you know, I'm not oh, quite sure. It's even dug out for a pool, I yeah, think. That's what it kind of looked like. Well, yeah, maybe they, uh, maybe they've got, yeah, maybe they have part of it dug out for a pool. It just needs. That'd be my guess, anyway. Yeah, looks like they can finish it. Yeah. 
Nice. Looks like about 4.6 acres. Let's sit on a good chunk of land. Yeah. So you know, I mean, this is, these are going to be more in, in rural area within New York, but but still, when we're looking at investments, what we're looking for is value. Uh, you know, in use, and and there's definitely going to be examples of, of those type of properties within some of these upcoming New York auctions. Yeah. And let's take a look here. Oh yeah, so these are the ones you want to take a look at. What look at these ones? I guess we're pretty much kind of running out of yeah. time here. Um, and whenever we uh, whenever we go over live training like this, where we're just kind of following along here on different pages, for some reason the uh, the recording uh, size is humongous. Um, but yeah, the sales. Uh, so we've looked at New York, we've looked at Michigan, we've looked at some uh, some stuff in California and some stuff in Florida, and also in addition to that, there are online uh, tax liens that are also now available over the counter. Tons of, of over-the-counter tax liens. So, if any of you are looking for tax liens to invest in, uh, there are a lot of those available now, and it's very easy with the systems that are uh, that are in place to uh, to buy those types of liens uh, now that they're available. So, uh, you know, those work out and good upcoming opportunities. Um, well, you saw the calendar. You know, there's tax sales taking place all over the place. So, I think it's a matter of uh, just figuring out where you want to begin, you know, to begin to participate in and uh, and start bidding. But the counties, because the counties are doing things like this, uh, it's making it easier for us. As long as we, you know, as long as we can find a starting point with them uh, using the county websites themselves, uh, it can really, you know, it's fairly simple for us now, and provides us with a lot of information without a lot of work. So anything that's going to save you time and not require. Uh, you know, anything that's going to make it easier when it comes to this is, uh, is really beneficial. Yeah, I mean, if anything, hopefully we showed you that there's a lot of opportunity out there. Uh, and so really it's just a matter of going out there and doing some of your own due diligence, your own research. You know, when it comes to tax sale investing, this isn't a lazy investment. You've got, you've got to pull up your sleeves a bit, you've got to get to work. Uh, and 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 what makes it nice is it's, it's not an easy investment, but it's also one of the most profitable investments that that we've ever seen, that you know that I've ever been a part of. Um, and so when it comes to, to tax sale investing, you know if you're willing to go out there and do a little bit of work, you're going to be able to take advantage of these properties. You're going to be able to change your lifestyle, change your income, build your retirement. Really, I think through tax sale investing, you know we can we can accomplish all of our financial goals. And retirement goals through the, just this investment strategy. You wouldn't even have to worry about investing anything else other than investing tax liens and deeds, and I think you can really build a, a, a pretty nice future for, for yourself. Yeah, in fact, I, I make, there's no doubt about it that uh, some of the property that we, that we looked at today will end up selling for a fraction of what it's worth. You know, it, it'll end up selling for as little as 10%, 15%, 20%. Uh, whatever that is, it's going to sell for uh, for an amount that um, is, uh, is nothing close to what it's worth. And if you were to compare that amount to any other form of real estate investing, you never hear those types of numbers. You're never going to hear about uh, buying stuff for 20% of value or more uh, anywhere in that neighborhood with any other type of real estate investing because other parties just don't have that kind of give when it comes to selling it. The only reason why it's even possible with this system because of the fact that they're involved with tax sales. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of advantages there for uh, for us, and there's going to be a lot of good opportunities there. You just have to be uh, ready to pull the trigger and and, uh, and start buying. So, um, well, excellent. We'll get this thing, uh, the recording for this, available and out to uh, to everybody. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to uh, to send those in to us. Emails can be the fastest way uh, to uh, to get a hold of us if you. Uh, you need anything or if you have any additional questions and we'll do our best to get back to you. Yep, have a, have a good week. All right, we'll see everybody later.